I can start. Yeah, thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity to share this last uh, session and congratulations to you all. We're hitting the home stretch and we are still around 100 people. That's that's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Alexander. I'm uh, on the board of Heels and also founded the, the German Heels. And um, now we, in this last session, we have the this small task to solve all the legal, scientific, technical, and political aspects concerning clinical tests and biomarkers. And I directly give to our speaker and co-founder, president of HEALS, Didier. Hey, thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> so this explains why you... Uh, okay. So thank you. Hello. So this is about uh, uh, how to favor clinical trials for longevity. And uh, first, I will begin with a few uh, facts uh, uh, and uh, uh, scientific aspects about longevity that most of you uh, know, but uh, probably not all people who will take a look at uh, this uh, video and at this conference. So the first one is uh, today, like uh, every day, about 110,000 people will die of diseases related to old age. And this is the first cause of mortality and morbidity in the world. It's about 70% uh, of deaths in the world. It's about 90% of deaths uh, in a country like uh, my country, Belgium, or like uh, in the United States. But even in the poorest countries, it is now more than 50% of uh, the causes of uh, death uh, diseases related to old age. We know that uh, people are dying from cardiovascular diseases, from uh, cancer, from neurodegenerative diseases, but we forget that is the elephant in the, elephant in the room that uh, even when dying of infectious diseases, we even if uh, when dying of falls, in most cases, uh, the uh, frailty due to age is related to this. And uh, of course, concerning COVID-19, uh, it is uh, also this uh, uh, situation. We also uh, know, so more the people here than other people, that uh, the process of aging is something incredibly uh, complicated. So John Further is uh, making this beautiful shimmer uh, each year to explain uh, all things related to uh, aging uh, and uh, how, how we can understand all processes and what's happening. Uh, but also there are many things that we still don't understand. And there is one uh, important aspect for me, that it's, uh, I would say, too, too often forgotten by uh, longevists, it's the fact that at the moment we still don't have any way to go uh, up the maximal lifespan. We really don't progress a lot. So uh, we had a gain of 20 years in the last uh, 2000 years because uh, people were already living uh, until 100 years, uh, 2000 years ago. Uh, the oldest person ever, Jean Calmar, was probably 120 years, um, and the oldest person in the world at the moment is uh, only 117, and the oldest man at the moment only 111. I think, and I think that many of you think, that it's very probably possible to find a treatment against aging within 15 to 30 years, but it will be complicated expensive and also we need for this uh, we need clinical among other things good clinical trials so what do we need for clinical test uh, uh, clinical trials for longevity i think one of the uh, major aspects is simplification so we have more scientists than ever in the history of humanity but we have also more bureaucracy than ever in the history of uh, humanity one of the consequences that for example it's costing about 1 billion to test for a new drug in europe or in the united states i even read uh, not so long ago that it was now about 2 billions it is primarily due to very heavy, very uh, complicated regulation. 
and going very slow is not at all a guarantee to have uh, things going better. So we need less bureaucratic and faster system of authorization at the European level, at the American level, or even maybe we can dream about a, a world level ever. At the moment, an average uh, IRB, uh, Institutional Review, uh, um, so the, the ethical committees in the US takes many months and the preparation of this, uh, asking for this takes uh, even more time. And an authorization is mostly only valid in one place and, at and certainly never valid in, one than, uh, in more than one country. Even in Europe, who is supposed to be more or less a unified place, uh, when you have an authorization in one country, it's not valid to another. We need kind of a paradigm shift. Uh, we need a moonshot, a Manhattan project for clinical trials. And at the moment, what's happening concerning uh, real test for longevity? Well, not much. There is the TAME uh, clinical trial, but still not uh, really start. Uh, normally, the international classification of diseases is supposed to better include uh, diseases related to old age, but this, would, this will not be, in my opinion, enough. For clinical tests, we need, of course, uh, double blind experiments, uh, double, double blind uh, trials, one group with the best already available treatment and one group or a few groups with the best already available treatment plus the new therapy or the new therapies. It's important to remind that for these people, even if they don't have the new therapy, they will be in a better situation than ordinary people because the, the, the following and uh, the fact that they will be better followed will be better for them. We need volunteers, but at the moment, what we don't have for clinical trials is people who are old enough. So 70, 80, 95 for men, 99 even for women. Well informed enough, in, of course, in good health, well, in good health, that's relative, and interested to work for themselves and for the community. What we also need is good products or good uh, and or good therapies. So this list you probably know already. So of course, gene therapy is not yet there. There are also aspects that we don't know. And so this was my list uh, just uh, until a few, let's say months ago, but now I would add blood therapies. This is, uh, we spoke about, about this uh, at the beginning of this meeting. This is a really uh, very promising and I hope and I heard that clinical uh, tests, uh, especially with old people, will begin soon. We need, and this is uh, also what was approached, especially today, uh, we need good biomarkers and public results uh, before the treatment, during the treatment, and after the treatment. And of course, especially when the uh, results are not what was expected. That is one of the big problems, you all know that probably, that uh, sometimes uh, there are uh, clinical trials or, or other experiments who are made and you never see, see the results because the results were not what was expected. Below you see one of the, uh, of a, 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 non-completed uh, list of possible biomarkers. Um, okay, so we need, like I said already, a global project, a kind of uh, yeah, Manhattan project. Sometimes it already uh, happened in the history of the humanity that there was kind of a decision to change things like the first man on the moon. There was also the, the war on the cancer who was less successful, but still it was kind of a, a successful story for many aspects. Uh, we need, of course, mo money. In my opinion, uh, it should be uh, more public money than private money, but this is for another uh, time and for another discussion probably than this one. We should, of course, use uh, more artificial intelligence that was already approached today. And what I wish, is no patents, that's my wish, that's not what we maybe absolutely need, need. Uh, or at least not for everything that it's paid with public money. 
because uh, because there is a risk that it's not uh, usable for everybody and also because it's there is a risk that it's going to slow down uh, research uh, concerning aging so i'm already uh, going to the conclusion and i hope uh, after one or two time for one or two uh, questions so we need this for have to to have more equality and more equity tomorrow. We need uh, this because it's uh, our du du duty as uh, scientists, as social activists, uh, to rescue people. And thank you, thank you for the people uh, from uh, Heels, uh, from the International Longevity Alliance, from the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation. Uh, they, these are organizations among the well many and uh, increasing number of organizations working uh, resolutely uh, in these directions. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Didi. There's actually one question from David Wood, but I would propose because of the time, David Wood first gives his talk and you have the time to answer the question in the chat. Okay. <laughs>